बेटा आई एम गोइंग लाइव प्लीज डू योर वर्क मैं आई कॉन्ट हेल्प यू बोलो बेटा अब जाओ ना यार प्लीज क्या प्रॉब्लम है बताओ बोलो मैं लेट हो जाऊंगा कोई बात नहीं हाँ फिर आई डोंट नो ऑल दिस थिंग्स यही चीज है तेरी प्रॉब्लम है Already I am live when you are doing all these things. हेलो गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर रचना गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर कविता गुड मॉर्निंग डॉक्टर आयुषी लेट्स स्टार्ट विद क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी वन विच ऑफ द फॉलोइंग रिप्रेजेंट द मोस्ट कॉमन क्रोमोसोमल स्ट्रक्चर फॉर ट्रू हमर फ्रोडेटिज्म द क्वेश्चन इज दिस Good morning, Dr. Karishma. Good morning, Dr. Sumit. Good morning, Dr. Drinkel. Let's uh, see the question number fifty-one. Okay. So now the question number fifty-one says that uh, which of the following represent the most common uh, structure of true hermaphrodit 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 hermaphroditism? True herma hermaphroditism what is basically the definition of true hermaphroditism the definition of uh, uh uh definition of true hermaphroditism is that the gonads should have have ovaries plus testes okay gonads uh, should have uh, ovaries and testes both okay so that is the definition of uh, true hermaphroditism and uh, uh, it is uh, possible that the chromosome can be mixed or the chromosome can be uh, of uh, uh, 46xx or 46xxy the most common associated chromosome structure with true hermaphroditism is is 46 xx please clear it and please uh, clear the deficiency also yes mamta uh, yes dr mamta i will be taking congenital adrenal hyperplasia don't worry okay is it clear now rachna please tell if it is clear the the chromosome structure which is associated with two hermaphrodite is 46 xx it is common in 70% okay okay and the definition is also clear next question is 41 okay
Next question is 41. 41 says that a 24 years lady has come up with 3 months amenorrhea, FSH and LH are high, right? A 24 years lady with 3 months amenorrhea, and FSH and LH are high. So, what is will be your next test? Right? This is question number uh, 41. So, what is the next step? The next step, uh, we all think that next step is UPT, beta. But if it is written FSH and LH is high, it rules out pregnancy. It rules out pregnancy. Okay? FSH and LH are not high in pregnancy. It rules out pregnancy. So, UPT is not the answer. The answer is serum estradiol. Okay, as you all know, due to the uh, because FSH and LH they are high, yani it is a hypergonadotropic, hypergonadotropic, right? The already we have studied that in azoospermia, what we do, what we do in azoospermia, uh, we uh, get the FSH and LH done. Right? Uh, Dr. Muhammad, you are writing progesterone question. Nahi, ma'am. I didn't understand what is your query. Progesterone question. Nahi. Please write down in detail, Dr. Muhammad. So here we were doing that uh, a 24 years old lady, we were having three, three months amenorrhea, maximum of you have marked UPT, we will not do UPT because if FSH and LH are high, it rules out pregnancy, okay, it rules out pregnancy, in pregnancy FSH and LH are low. Okay, so uh, if a patient comes to us with amenorrhea uh, and same is the investigation which we go for uh, uh, for azoospermia, we get FSH, why not progesterone answer? Okay, I will tell you beta, if a patient is coming to us with amenorrhea or azoospermia, we get FSH and LH done. So to find out where is the fault, okay, FSH and LH uh, it means it is a hypergonadotropic FSH and LH if they are decrease it means it is hypogonadotropic and if FSH and LH are normal it means the fault is at the level of uterus same is the investigations which we do for the uh, project uh, which we do for azoospermia. If FSH and LH are high, it means that the uh, it is testicular failure. Right? We did in infertility. FSH and LH are low. It means it is hypothalamic and hypopituitary failure. Hypothalam uh, it is hypothalamic failure or pituitary failure. Right? And FSH and LH, if they are normal, then it is post-testicular obstruction. Okay? Similarly are here. So, this is a approach to for amenorrhea and azoospermia. Dr. Mohammed, uh, why not progesterone answer? Because uh, it depends on the pay, uh, it depends on the doctor. Okay? Uh, the doctor must have not got any symptoms related with progesterone deficiency. Progesterone challenge test is done in patients who have PCOD. Okay. Progesterone challenge test is done in patients who have PCOD. Uh, Dr. Rachna is saying I will uh, explain in detail. Right. Okay, Dr. Rachna. See, basically amenorrhea. And azoospermia, they both means that gonads are not functioning, okay. 
amenorrhea and azoospermia means that the uh, amenorrhea means that ovaries are not functioning right and azoospermia means testes are not functioning okay have you got it okay we know that the reason for amenorrhea is uh, secondary amenorrhea is pregnancy most common reason is pregnancy right but here already the doctor has uh, the in the question they have given fsh and lh are high so they are approaching with fsh and lh so i want to tell you here that in the condition of amenorrhea or azoospermia both we are discussing if we uh, investigate the case by doing fsh and lh if fsh and lh are decrease it means that hypothalamo pituitary ovarian axis has not started so when hypothalamus is not stimulating the pituitary pituitary will not stimulate the gonads gonads will not produce the estrogen so there will be amenorrhea similarly is hypothalamus pituitary testicular axis okay if hypothalamus is not producing fsh and lh then uh, sorry uh, hypothalamus pituitary are not producing fsh and lh then uh, the testes will not produce testosterone and then there will be no spermatogenesis right so if fsh and lh are decrease it means it is hypo gonadotropic it means the fault is at the level of hypothalamus and pituitary dr rachna have you got this thing please write down in the chat box the fault is at the level of hypothalamus and pituitary okay now if fsh and lh are high if fsh and lh are high it means fsh and lh were being produced okay fsh and lh were being produced but uh, the negative feedback there is no one to give negative feedback to fsh and, and lh it means that uh, it means that there is a problem in in the gonads okay because when ovaries produce estrogen then they give negative feedback to fsh and lh after a certain level in the similar way when testes produce testosterone then they give a negative feedback to the the hypothalamus to stop produce fsh and lh right so if fsh and lh are high it means that uh dr himanshu dr mohammed i i will be taking your question also please uh, listen to this question if fsh and lh are high then it means that uh, the estrogen or the testosterone are not being produced it means it is a case of gonadal failure okay or you can say ovarian failure or testicular failure okay is it okay dr rachna please tell if it is okay okay then uh, next is next is if fsh and lh are normal if fsh and lh are normal then uh, then it means the fault is at uterus okay it means that hypothalamus is producing it and negative feedback is also being going estrogen and testosterone are also being produced it means the next level is uterus or post testicular in case of azoospermia okay post testicular post testicular right post testicular obstruction right have you got it so now what are the fault at uterus asherman syndrome 
Asherman syndrome. In Asherman syndrome, do you remember that FSH and LH was normal? Right? Post-esticular obstruction is vas deferens obstruction. Okay, now in the question number 41, they have given that FSH and LH was high. Now, it means that you know that FSH and LH are high in the case of testicular or uh, ovarian failure, right? They, now, you will confirm it by doing serum estradiol. Let us see the another uh, options. UPT will not be done because FSH and LH are not high in pregnancy. Rather, they are decreased. Rather, they are decreased. Okay. And uh, ultrasound help us to see whether all organs are present or not. As it is a recent case of ovarian failure. Uh, so, ultrasound help us to see whether uterus is present or not. Okay. Whether ovaries is present or not. So, ultrasound is not of uh, much help here. Progesterone challenge test is usually done in PCOD. When estrogen priming is there, jab, uh, when estro uh, estrogen has done endometrial proliferation, then uh, we see that whether progesterone uh, by giving external uh, progesterone, whether bleeding is occurring or not. Okay, but since FSH or LH are high, it means that it indicates that estrogen uh, uh, ovarian failure is there and estrogen is not being produced. So, we will do serum estradiol. Dr. Rachna, is it, uh, should we go to next question if you have understood? Dr. Nandraj is saying 41, 41 has been done, 12th, 12th question, what is 12th question? Which one cannot be diagnosed by laparoscopy? Which one cannot be diagnosed by laparoscopy? Beta, when we are doing laparoscopy, then we are seeing the, uh, then we are seeing the peritoneal cavity, right? It, Dr. Nandraj, when we are doing the laparoscopy, then it means by with the help of the scope, we are seeing the peritoneal cavity. And what is the fault in the, what is the fault in the, uh, in the septate uterus? That fusion has occurred, but septa is, has not resolved. Fusion of the Mullerian duct has occurred, but septa is not resolved. So, the uterus from the peritoneal cavity will definitely be normal. Okay, we will not be able to see the the septa septa will only be seen by septa will only be seen by hysteroscopically inside the uterus okay septal resection is done inside the uterus okay now the another option in this was unicornuate and bicornuate beta in unicornuate uterus uh, you know that uh, what is the condition the uterus is deviated to one side and half the size of uterus is there. Right? Half the size of uterus is there. So, unicornuate uterus is, is can be seen on peritoneal cavity. Right? Bicornuate uterus can be seen on, uh, bicornuate uterus can be seen on peritoneal cavity. So, because what is in bicornuate? This is, Let me draw the biconvate for you. Like this. Right? Like this. Like this. There are there is in, uh, the uh, incomplete fusion. HSG versus hysteroscopy, which is best for Mullerian anomaly. Dr. Muhammad is asking HSG versus hysteroscopy, which is best for Mullerian anomaly. Beta, uh, for the septate uterus, hysteroscopy is best. Okay. Okay. If you are talking only of the septate uterus, hysteroscopy is best. Because in that, we are seeing the anomaly with the uh, our eyes. With the help of the scope. Directly with our eyes. 
ओके बट फॉर मुलेरियन एनॉमली बिकॉज एज वी हैव सीन दैट द यूनिकॉर्नवेट बाई कॉर्नवेट रूडिमेंट्री हॉर्न ऑल दिस एनॉमलीज कैन बी सीन ओनली ऑन लेप्रोस्कोपी फॉर एज अ मुलेरियन एनॉमली एज अ टोटल द बेस्ट इन्वेस्टिगेशन इज हिस्ट्रोस्कोपी प्लस लेप्रोस्कोपी ओके हिस्ट्रोस्कोपी प्लस लेप्रोस्कोपी ओके इफ टिपिकली ऑफ सेपरेट यूट्रस से आस then hysteroscopy is best then uh, hsg i hope dr mohammad it is clear to you uh, after 12th it is dr ayushi's queries 36 young female with primary amenorrhea normal breast and no pubic hair so here i would like to tell you that there are two uh, patients of primary amenorrhea in your syllabus two patients of primary amenorrhea in your syllabus other than cryptomenorrhea okay primary amenorrhea in your syllabus one is mullerian a genesis or mrkh and the another is androgen insensitivity syndrome okay other is uh, androgen insensitivity syndrome okay so uh, you should know that in mullerian in a in, uh, in mullerian a genesis or you can say in uh, mrkh right what happens this is question number 36 please listen carefully this question is expected this is quite commonly asked question in mrkh everything is normal the uterus is absent so patient has primary amenorrhea so here pubic hair will be present pubic hairs are present but in androgen insensitivity androgen insensitivity it is a case of male pseudo hermaphrodite because androgens are not sensitive so who which hormone is responsible for making pubic hairs which hormone is responsible for making pubic hairs androgens so here in androgen insensitivity the uterus is absent plus the pubic and axillary hairs are also absent because the patient is androgen insensitive is it clear dr ayushi is it clear so your uh, question okay now in the option there was a, a bit confusion uh, that there was no pubic hair and see see both the options first option is complete androgen sensitivity syndrome so it is nothing they have just confused you in option a they have written complete androgen sensitivity androgen sensitivity syndrome is nothing complete androgen sensitivity so the answer is partial androgen insensitivity the syndrome is ais androgen insensitivity have you got dr ayushi it was just a play of words okay then now take the let us take the next query of dr ayushi 39 39 is uh, anomalies associated with uniconvate uterus are all except anomalies associated with uniconvate uterus are all except now in uniconvate uterus basically mullerian uh, duct problems are there okay mullerian duct problems are there so uh, Uh, just after this i will take dr mohammad your question okay just after 39 so a uh, mullery one sided uh, what happens in unicornuate unique in the unicornuate it one sided one mullerian duct did not develop okay so 
oh there are chances that the um, that the renal anomalies will also be there because both of them develop from mesonephros okay mullerian duct and the renal duct system both of them develop from mesonephros so if mullerian duct is not growing so there are chances that similar side similar side mm, renal duct system will not be developed okay so the options were contralateral renal anomalies it is not possible ipsilateral renal anomalies are possible cryptomenorrhea yes if there is vaginal age anesthesis cryptomenorrhea can occur primary infertility it is possible if the uterus is absent then uh, it can lead to primary infertility okay have you got it why there is cryptomenorrhea in the case of unicornuate uterus because jo ek side nahi grow kahi hai the one sided mullerian duct which has not grown it represents itself as a as if it is as if it is as if it is yes rudimentary horn so that rudimentary uh, horn itself starts bleeding okay in the rudimentary horn the duct which has not grown present itself as rudimentary horn so in the rudimentary horn there can be cryptomenorrhea okay let me take question number 13 identify the anomaly dr mohammed your question is here now in this what is there that there are two uterine cavities two uterine cavities are there and they have asked you what it can be right so here i would like to tell you please listen carefully if there are two uterine cavities and two cervix two vagina the picture is like this then it is a case of uterine didelphus okay then it is a case of uterine didelphus it means it means two uterus two cervix two vagina the answer will be uterine didelphus if it is a case of only one side if it is a case of of if it is a case of yes dr sumit you are right if it is a case of only one side uterus okay if it is a case of only one sided uterus then in the hsg then it is unicornuate okay if a picture is like this there are two uterine cavities and one cervix one vagina then it can be it can be biconvate or it can be septate so is it clear it can be any of these now what happens in biconvate let me tell you in the biconvate the two mullerian ducts do not fuse the two mullerian ducts they do not fuse okay if these are two they have fused here there is incomplete mullerian duct fusion okay there is incomplete mullerian duct fusion right so uh, in the bicornuate there is incomplete mullerian duct fusion so what will be in between these two cavities what will be present what will be present in between these two cavities here will be the uterus wall between two cavities originally there will be 
यूट्रस वॉल यूट्रस वॉल एंडोमेट्रियम मायोमेट्रियम एंडोमेट्रियम मायोमेट्रियम आर यू एबल टू गेट दिस थिंग ओके आर यू एबल टू गेट दिस थिंग दैट इन द बाइकॉन्विट यूट्रस इन बिटवीन द टू यूट्राइन कैविटीज देयर विल बी देयर विल बी यूट्रस वॉल वेयर एज इन द केस ऑफ सेप्टा सेप्टेट यूट्रस there was complete fusion of of uh, uh, dr shefi it will be after the it will be after this query section otherwise the quiz get stops okay so in in the septate uterus between the two between the two uh, cavities there will not be the uterus wall and myometrium nahi hoga only septa will be there okay there will not be there will not be the myometrium the septa will be there the septa will be there right so these two cavities will be quite wide ye jo do these two cavities will be quite wide the angle between these two cavities will be more more okay it will be more than 90 degree okay and the fundus will be and the fundus yes dr mohammad you are right and the fundus will be fundus will be more than the gap between the ends of these cavity this gap this gap the length of the fundus it will be more than 4 cm more than yes dr sumit you are right but please make the concept so that you can remember the gap between the two cavities will be more than 90 degree in the biconvent uterus because in between the biconvent uterus us but in the biconvent uterus there is yes now uh, you have remember whereas in the septate uterus the angle will be less than 90 degree and the gap between the fundus will be will be less than 4 cm okay now you can see uh, dr mohammad in the question mm, the angle is less than Uh, less than ninety degree or ninety degree. Okay, Doctor Mohammad, can you see? Can you see that the gap is uh, that the angle is ninety or less than ninety? okay and one clue more i want to give you uh, give it to you dr mohammad mohammad that uh, uh, usually these uh, uterus as separate uterus is much much more common so if the angle is in confusion then you have to take it separate because separate uterus are fundus normal nahi hai ma'am beta you have to measure the distance between the fundus you have to measure the dis distance between the fundus okay see i will tell you which type of which type of which type of hsgs are this is a bi convex uterus hsg This is the biconvex uterus HSG. Okay, this such a gap in the such a broad fundus and such a wide angle. Okay, if okay, okay, and 
if you have any problem then you can extend your angle up till 110 degree also more than 110 degree is is biconvex is it clear is it clear dr mohammed डॉक्टर आयुष की थर्टी नाइन वी हैव टेकन ओके क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी नाइन क्वेश्चन नंबर थर्टी नाइन दिस वी हैव टेकन क्वेश्चन नंबर फोर्टी वन हैज आल्सो बीन टेकन राइट एंड नाउ इट इज क्वेश्चन नंबर फिफ्टी बाइकॉन्वेट यूट्रस इज ड्यू टू Biconvex uterus is due to incomplete fusion of Mullerian duct. Doctor Sumit, is it okay? <coughs> if there is, these are two ducts. If they don't fuse, then there is uterine diadelphus. Okay, complete failure of fusion. Complete. failure of fusion is uterus diadelphus in uterus diadelphus there will be two cervix two uterus two vagina right and incomplete failure incomplete fusion is is Biconvex. What is biconvex? They have fused, but there is incomplete. So usually one cervix is found in the case of biconvex. Okay. After fifty, it is forty-seven. Which has best OBS treatment? Ah, uh, which has best OBS outcome? if no treatment is given see in the case of 47 number question is best obs outcome is in the case of uterine diadelphus because in the case of uterine diadelphus there is in the case of uterine diadelphus there is two uterus two cervix two vagina the only problem which we get in the case of uterine diadelphus is that there is preterm labor pains otherwise there are no infertility no rpl recurrent pregnancy losses and no no implantation problem no surgery is done to correct them because we get a baby in 8th month almost okay dr sumit is it clear to you after 47 is 42 ideal time of repair uh, of vaginal agenesis as you know that in mrkh the upper two third vagina is not there right so there is vaginal agenesis so ideal time of repair is before or now if this uh, before or after marriage now if this lady if Uh, this lady wants to have a normal sexual life vagina should be there okay so we do a vaginal construction right so if we will do it before or after marriage why because then only she can use the vagina if we do it in the childhood then how it will use the vagina uh, she will use the vagina she will use 
vagina for uh, sexual life so how she will use the vagina in childhood she will use it only before or after marriage otherwise the vaginal uh, construction will fail uh for which question you have written why not uniconvert in uniconvert uterus dr sumit one side duct does not grow see these are two ducts in uniconvert uterus one side duct does not grow only one sided duct grow that is why on hsg we have a deviated uterus okay have you got it dr sumit have you got it question number 47 Dr Mukul has asked question number 40 Question number 40 Dr Mukul queries this Dr Mukul uh, here there are no pubic hairs If there are no pubic hair it means that it is a case of androgen insensitivity it means that it is a case of androgen insensitivity okay it is a case of androgen insensitivity have you got it dr mukul in androgen mrkh and androgen insensitivity these are case of primary amenorrhea in which uterus is absent in both okay but in mrkh pubic hairs are present and in androgen insensitivity pubic hair are absent is it clear Thirty seven, thirty three, thirty seven, thirty seven. Listen carefully. It is very easy. Question number thirty seven. In thirty seven, they have asked us female pseudo hermaphrodite. All are true except. So what is female pseudo hermaphrodite? That its genotype is X X, but its external genitalia. is of that of male okay so which who makes the external genitalia if androgens are present in axis then the uh, genital tubercle genital swellings will make male external genitalia if androgens are absent if androgens are absent then external genitalia will be of female so what happens in female pseudo hermaphrodite is that in the female pseudo hermaphrodite it that in the female pseudo hermaphrodite what happens is that the xx xx is the genotype right xx is the genotype but due to the excess of androgens the gen external genitalia becomes male okay due to the excess of androgens the external genitalia is that of a male okay because normally in females androgens are absent in the intrauterine life but if the androgens are present then it will be a female pseudo hermaphrodite so the first option karyotype 46 xx is correct mis is not produced mullerian inhibiting substance is not produced that is right right fused 
posterior what is mis mis is similar to amh amh is produced in females in puberty right mis is not produced in females in intrauterine life right fused posterior labia with prominent clitoral hypertrophy that's yes that is what is the ambiguous genitalia and the last option ovaries and uterus are absent ovaries and uterus are present because they are double x so now ovaries will be made y is absent so from the genital ridge ovaries will be there and because mis is not produced so mullerian duct will make uterus and uh, cervix and vagina is it clear dr sumit question number 37 is clear all these questions of uh, this you have to approach with the uh, uh, definitions if you will approach in definitions you will be able to see that uh, you are going to the answer okay after 37 the query is 33 <coughs> amenorrhea is there infantile uterus is there on karyotyping it is 46 xo xy what is the management c usually question number 33 okay listen carefully usually the turner has 46 xo genotype okay if 46 xy is also present okay if 46 xy is also present then here there will be testes present okay mostly what is the genotype of turner xo 46 uh, sorry 45 xo but sometimes the the genotype of turner is mix 45 xo plus 46 xy so due to the presence of 46 xy there will be test uh, testes will also be present okay so we have to do bilateral since this testes will be on the uh, will be crypt, uh, will be crypto archidism in the inguinal so we have to do bilateral gonadectomy okay okay vaginoplasty no we will not do vaginoplasty as uterus will present so vagina will also be present no doubt it is an infantile uterus resection of clitoris is not required hrt uh, as it is uh, uh, as it is uh, 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 as the xy is present so we have to treat it like a male okay so we will not give this uh, lady estrogen because xy is present so we have to treat this this turner as as male right next question after third query is after 33 it is 30 okay dr rachna your query will also be here solved congenital adrenal hyperplasia okay dr rachna see here congenital adrenal hyperplasia all of you will see here see there is one case in your exam of male pseudo hermaphrodite that is androgen insensitivity and there is only one case of female pseudo hermaphrodite that is that is congenital adrenal hyperplasia congenital adrenal hyperplasia 
first we will see that how normally the uh, uh, the androgens are formed in the adrenal cortex just as we have hpo axis in the similar way we have hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis okay hypothalamus from the hypothalamus what is released yes acth and then from the pituitary what is released okay so see just as we have hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis in the similar way we have hypothalamus pituitary adrenal axis from the hypothalamus acth releasing hormone adrenocorticotropic releasing hormone is released right and then from the pituitary acth is released adrenocorticotropic hormone right now this will act on adrenal and adrenal makes three hormones what are they write in the chat box aldosterone aldosterone cortisone and androgens right so these are the three hormones produced now as we studied in hypothalamus pituitary ovarian axis estrogen was giving the negative feedback and stopping the fsh and lh here only the aldosterone and corticosterone uh, cortisone it gives it gives negative feedback androgens they don't give negative feedback okay so who stops the release of acth and uh, uh, adrenocorticotropin hormone releasing hormone the excess of aldosterone and excess of cortisone it gives negative feedback okay is it clear up till here now let's see the another cholesterol which we eat is changed into is changed into beta aldosterone can also give major it is given by cortisone okay major it is given by cortisone aldosterone can also give okay cholesterol is changes into preg nene lone right is it clear pregnenone loan is change into progesterone and progesterone is change into 17 hydroxy progesterone and then this is change into androgens is it clear is it clear now this progesterone is forming aldosterone and this is forming cortisone okay is it clear this is the biochemical steps which are occurring in the adrenal cortex and all these are forming now let us see what are the enzyme acting okay here the enzyme are 21 and 11 alpha hydroxylase let me change the pen here also 21 and 
इलेवन अल्फा हाइड्रोक्सीलेस ओके राइट ओके नाउ व्हाट है व्हाट विल हैपन इफ दिस ट्वेंटी वन एंड इलेवन विल नॉट बी देयर सिंथेसाइज इन अवर बॉडी if there is deficiency of 21 and 11 alpha hydroxylase then aldosterone and cortisone on will not be formed then aldosterone and cortisone will not be formed right then there will be only androgens will be formed see here then these two hormones will not be formed if there is 21 and alpha hydroxylase deficiency in the adrenal cortex there will be only androgens will be formed are you getting my point so no one will be there to give the negative feedback no one will be there to give the neg negative feedback so now there will be excess of so now there will be excess working of of this excess no one is giving negative feedback so excess of hypothalamus acth releasing hormone will be released okay right excess of acth will be released and adrenal will be functioning day and night if we say normally only two times adrenal cortex functions and make these enzymes okay but now this adrenal will go into hyperplasia and excess and androgens will be synthesized now what this excess androgens will be do these will be synthesized in the intrauterine life okay these will be synthesized in the uh, in the intrauterine life okay so these excess androgens will will now make male external genitalia if androgens are present then the genital tubercle and genital swellings they make male external genitalia right now the female is 46 xx there are present uterus and tubes but the genitalia is that of male so this is a case of female pseudo hermaphrodite this this girl will be having what ambiguous genitalia right ambiguous genitalia when this girl will born this girl will have so if they tell you that there is 21 alpha hydroxylase deficiency or 11 alpha hydroxylase deficiency so it means that it is a case of adrenal hyperplasia it is a case of female pseudo hermaphrodite is it clear dr rachna twenty one alpha hydroxylase means hydroxylase means absence of absence of aldosterone cortisone and excess of androgens due to due to due to adrenal hyperplasia right now you tell me dr rachna that if these are not working these pathways are not working so these pathway will be hyper so which enzyme will be in excess 
which in the this androgen pathway is functioning hyper right loss of negative feedback is there so all this will be hyper working adrenal gland is functioning day and night so all these compounds will be maximum seven so uh, will be found in excess so 17 hydroxy progesterone will be in excess yes progesterone 17 i think now you get got it the answer of question number 30 is it clear now let's take the another question Twenty-eight. Let's take question number twenty-eight. Fourteen-year girls comes in OPD with absent thilarke. Okay, so there is absent thilarke, absent breast. In a 14 years girl. Okay. So on examination uterus was present. Investigation shows high FSH and karyotype is XY. Okay. Karyotype is XY. Now if there is karyotype is XY. If the karyotype is XY. Then why this this girl is coming to us as this uh, human being is coming to us as girl if 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 this was xy then it should be a male because now it is a case of gonadal dysgenesis is it clear to you because its testes were not functioning right because its testes does not function so this xy genotype has come as is coming to us as girl right in androgen insensitivity syndrome beta in androgen insensitivity syndrome androgens are formed but they are not acting Androgens are formed but they are not acting. Testes is normal. So these androgens they change into estrogen and they make breast. Thilarche occurs. Yes beta Sumit it is a male pseudo hermaphrodite because the genotype is XY. And the testes are not functioning. Right? What happens in androgen insensitivity syndrome? In androgen insensitivity syndrome, testes are producing androgens. But androgens, they are not acting. So, this androgen is changed into estrogen. And this estrogen makes breast. But in this, in the case which is given in the question, they are telling that genotype is XY, testes are there. So, if genotype is XY, the testes are there. So, now testes should produce androgen. But androgens are not produced because it, they are manifesting it as girl. They are saying that it is girl. It means its external genitalia is like girl. So, androgens are not produced. So, it means testes are not functioning. So, it is a case of gonadal dysgenesis. Is it clear? Dr. Sumit, everyone here in the class, is it clear? After 30, it is 28. Okay, 28 we have taken. Let's take the another. Okay, 
ट्वेंटी सेवन दिस शुड नॉट हैव बीन प्रॉब्लम ट्वेंटी सेवन वॉज अ इजी वन करेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर ऑफ एम आर के एच इज ऑल एक्सेप्ट करेक्टरिस्टिक फीचर ऑफ एम आर के एच इज ऑल एक्सेप्ट इन एम आर के एच मुलेरियन डक्ट इज एबसेंट सो वट डज मुलेरियन डक्ट मेक मुलेरियन डक्ट मेक्स यूट्रस सर्विक्स एंड अपर टू थर्ड वेजाइना सो अपर टू थर्ड वेजाइना बट दिस डज नॉट मेक ओवरी ओवरी इज मेक बाय जेनाइटल रिज सो ओव्यूलेशन विल अक्कर सो लास्ट स्टेटमेंट इज फॉल्स डी ओके डॉक्टर रचना आई विल एक्सप्लेन इट आफ्टर वन ऑन टू क्वेश्चन आई विल एक्सप्लेन इट इज इट क्लियर डॉक्टर सुमित next question after 27 is 26 in uterus didelphus what all are possible except okay 26 is is uterus didelphus basically in uterus didelphus the two ducts they don't fuse at all so they grow independently so there are <coughs> two uterus two cervix two vagina okay so because you know that there is uh, this uterus will be more longitudinal as compared to the normal uterus this uterus will be more longitudinal as compared to the other uterus राइट और लंबा होगा ये ठीक है और लंबाई में होगा सो वेन द यूट्रस इज मोर लॉन्गिट्यूडनल एज कंपेयर टू द अदर नॉर्मल यूट्रस देन हाउ ट्रांसफर्स लाइफ विल बी देयर राइट आर यू गेटिंग माई पॉइंट डॉक्टर सुमित सो ट्रांसफर्स लाइफ इज नॉट पॉसिबल transverse lie is possible once the uterus is more in horizontal dimensions let us see the other options preterm labor will occur because uterus is of half the size endometriosis is will occur because there will be more back flow and abortions will occur because the uterus is of half the size okay preterm due to preterm labor abortions will occur is it clear After twenty six is seventeen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen. Seventeen number question is treatment of virilizing adrenal hyperplasia. So there is one hyperplasia. So this is question number seventeen. There is one adrenal hyperplasia which is congenital. The which we discussed. right which was congenital now what if this enzyme 21 alpha hydroxylase and 11 alpha hydroxylase they stop functioning in juvenile that is around the juvenile age now now what will happen in the juvenile age then it is known as juvenile adrenal hyperplasia 
so this girl will be perfectly normal but now in the juvenile age this girl will have excess of androgen which will this excess androgens will now uh, do masculinization of that female or virilization clitoromegaly hirsutism irreversible hirsutism okay so the juvenile adrenal hyperplasia is also known as vir virilizing adrenal hyperplasia so as the aldosterone and cortisone will be will be decreased the aldosterone and cortisone will be decreased so the drug of choice what is the function of aldosterone sodium and water retention so this girl will drink more water will have more sodium but the cortisone deficiency will only be completed by the drug cortisone okay is it clear dr sumit is it clear 15 15 is that a girl has come with amenorrhea 16 year girl has come with amenorrhea okay now her breast and genital examination was normal she is found to have 5 alpha reductase deficiency now 5 alpha reductase is present only in males okay 5 alpha reductase is present only in males what does 5 alpha reductase do testosterone ko 5 hydro testosterone mein badalte hain its active form they change testosterone to 5 hydro testosterone its active form right isn't it this happens so now it means the testosterone will be produced in this male its genotype is xy right so it means that testosterone will be produced but it will not be changed into 5 hydro testosterone so this is a another case of so this is a another case of male pseudo uh, hermaphroditism right because if there will be no uh, active form of testosterone then it will not act then the androgens will not act right so it is somewhat similar to some somewhat similar to androgen insensitivity now this whole testosterone will get converted into to estrogen and there will be formation of breast and a uh, female external genitalia is it clear dr sumit question number 15 is clear this testosterone if there is deficiency of 5 alpha uh, uh, reductase then this testosterone will not act so there is androgen deficiency okay due to the androgen deficiency the wolfian duct will not grow right the wolfian duct will not grow the genitalia will not be of a male it will be the external genitalia of female yes so that is it question number 15 after question number 15 what is there question number 14 Question number fourteen is: This is a cannula which is used to do HSG. In question number fourteen, it is Leach Wilkinson cannula. The another cannula is beta, named Rubin cannula. This is a cannula by which we do HSG, and we put it in the cervix, and then we put the 
डाय ओके एंड देन वी टेक एक्स रेज so it is a cannula uh, you can see in the other hsg images see this image of this question in x rays also you also see see the image of unicornoid uterus okay this is uterus this is cervix and we put this cannula here and then from its one end we put the die radio opaque dye okay and then we the dye goes inside the uterus and dye goes inside the tubes and then dye goes inside the peritoneal cavity so if dye is coming inside the peritoneal cavity here it means the tubes are patent is it clear dr sumit is this clear question number 13 this has been done question number 6 most common congenital abnormality is most common co congenital ab abnormality is arcuate uterus and on the second number it is septate arcuate uterus most common hai second number pe septate hai isko to yaad hi karna hai theek hai this you have to learn only is it clear dr sumit let us take the another question uh dr mohammed is asking what is 3 beta bsd okay uh, so here i would like to tell you that 3 bsd is equals to it is a enzyme in the adrenal pathway 3 beta hydroxy steroidal dehydrogenase okay wo jo adrenal cortex <coughs> in the adrenal cortex mein jo humne wo pathway padha tha pregnenolone changes into progesterone changes into 17 hydroxy progesterone changes into androgen right so there was a enzyme 3 beta s beta hydroxy steroidal dehydrogenase mohammad rafiq is asking question number 7 has been taken 13 14 has been taken question number 16 Dr Muhammad query is question number 16 which of the following condition does not present with both mullerian and wolfian duct structure so you all know at around 6 weeks of intrauterine life wolfian duct is also present and mullerian duct is also present right so wolfian duct grows only in the presence of wolfian duct grows if androgens are released from the testes right wolfian duct it grows if androgens are released from testes or you can say if androgens from testes are present right and mullerian duct grows if amh is absent right so let us see the uh, different structures amh deficiency so if amh is absent 
then mullerian duct will grow right if in a male xy male if amh is not released usually amh is released from the sertoli cell if amh is not released then wolfian will grow because androgens will come from the testes and mullerian amh is absent then it will grow right ovo testicular syndrome if ovaries and testes both are present then wolfian duct will be functioning because testes will make androgens right and ovaries will not be that functioning because some amh will be present but they will be present mullerian duct will be present okay mixed gonadal dysgenesis mixed gonadal dysgenesis will surely not help you right agar dono gonads hi kaam nahi kar rahe hain to wolfian duct duct will be present and mullerian duct will be present though they both will not grow but they both will be present last is fsh receptor mutation if fsh receptor mutation is there then a fsh is required in puberty right fsh is required in puberty fsh is required in puberty so fsh receptor mutation will not lead to it okay so 16 number is done dr mohammed has also asked some other question 18 remnant of wolfian duct so what are the remnant of wolfian duct in a female there are remnant of wolfian duct because wolfian duct don't grow due to the absence of androgens so apofuron apofuron means above ovary para ufron beside ovary so these both structures they are in the broad ligament above ovary beside ovary these are in the broad ligament okay after 18 it is 33 i think 33 we have explained yeah now uh, dr rachna your query of uh, different type of uh, hymen right different type of hymen dr rachna has asked different type of hymen okay usually the hymen is usually the hymen is is uh, uh it is like this okay the hymen gets perforated if this hymen has a septa in between then it is okay rather than like that it is has a septa in between it is septate okay it is septate if it does not get perforated and it is covered like this only a small ring is there like this so this is annular okay this is annular that is septate and if the hymen this is imperforate hymen nothing everything was closed hymen does, does not get canalized right if like this small small opening are present in the hymen then this is cribriform cribriform 
ओके क्रिब्री फ्रॉम एन्यूलर दीज आर द मेन हाइमंस ओके इज इट क्लियर डॉक्टर रचना i think all the queries has been done if anything is left please write down in the chat box tomorrow there will be mock test tomorrow there will be mock test at 11 am almost 70 questions thank you for all being here uh this thank you dr rachna thank you sumit thank you dr mohammad uh Thank you, Doctor Mohammad. Thank you, Doctor Mukul. Thank you, Doctor Ayushi. Thank you, Doctor Himanshu. Ah, uh, one query of Doctor Himanshu has left. Ah, uh, that why there are different answer for question fifteen and fifty two. Let me see. question 15 and 52 himanshu is asking why there are different answers question number uh, dr himanshu question number 5 Fifty two was of a uh, female pseudo hermaphrodite. Female pseudo hermaphrodite, right? And whereas in question number fifteen, it was. was a case of male pseudo hermaphrodite that is why the problem is i hope you have got this no dr himanshu in in question number 15 the answer is not congenital adrenal hyperplasia it is a male pseudo hermaphrodite its testosterone is not functioning because there is 5 alpha reductase deficiency okay okay so here we close this